welcome to another Armored 3 classroom, Basic Aviation. What I'm going to cover today is, just like the title says, Basic Aviation. And you're probably wondering, well, Skahan, there's so many videos out on YouTube, Armored 2, Armored 3, things like that, that kind of tell us really where we should be, how we should be, what, you know, the basic fundamentals of aviation, that's true. Um, you don't have to watch the video. It doesn't bother me. But I'm doing it over a specific set of mods and uses that can help you. I'm also going to go into it a lot slower. Most of the videos that I see, just assumption is the mother of all fuck-ups and we roll on. Um, I'm not doing that. I'm going to go ahead and take my time. Um, this is going to be geared towards more of the newer players coming to Arma. Um, newer players coming from Arma 2 to Arma 3 uh, because they're still trickling in and people who, from from pretty much you just buying the game and coming in. Um, I'm also going to go over uh, a lot of techniques for pilots to use for the public. You guys can consume this as the public and for the guys that are in my unit this is kind of a visual aid. Now I will during this video I will stop say hey you can pause it here rewind it back and just continue these techniques and they will assist you in the basics now this is strictly basic we're just trying to get you off the ground in the air and back on the ground safely nothing more nothing less all right so just to make sure we're clear now if you're I guess what encompasses this different is the mods we are using um, we're using a whole bunch of different mods um, RHS, as you can see beside me, we are using the beautiful, beautiful UH-60 instead of the Ghost Hawk. Um, if you are vanilla, use the Ghost Hawk. It is the most capable and similar flight dynamic mechanics as this aircraft you see, except it's faster and it has a little bit better maneuverability. Um, if you have RHS, if you have these mods, and you know, shout out to these guys for making such an awesome mod um, and letting us use it. Um, if you're using this mod, this mod, use this aircraft first. If this is your first time flying, or you're just not good at it, you just want to take the time to get good at it. Okay, um, you know, and kudos for every guy, every per, every mod that I'm, I'm about to rattle off because you'll you'll see these around, you'll see them. On the flight line, you'll see them as we're going. You'll see selection options and things like that. And I just need to go through them. Um, we are using Ace. Um, kudos for those guys. We're using Rav Lifter. Kudos for that. And uh, MELB. And we're also using T4, Task Force Radio. Now, you can use any combination of these. The reason we use all these is we're a realism unit. So I want to kind of just get you guys set up in the right mindset. Because this is all stuff that kind of trial by fire. Um, and it just makes it so much easier if you if you have something tangible that you're looking to do something and there it is instead of just assuming, which many, 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 many people, not saying their videos are bad, not saying anything, they're actually quite good, I learned off of them, but many people make videos, tutorials, and assume you know XYZ and we're just going to go dip into it and that's it, okay, I'm not doing that, we're just going to take it nice and slow. So before we even take this beautiful aircraft off the off the deck, off the ground, whatever you want to say, we need to go over three things. Number one is controls. So let's go right into controls. Go ahead and hit your escape button. Go to configure. Go to controls. Our first one is helicopter movement. Relatively simple. Um, I'm just going to scroll down. These are my setups. What I've done is I went to presets at the very bottom. Clicked Arma 2, hit OK because I'm an Arma 2 junkie. If you've been practicing and playing, you have Arma 3, Arma 3 Alternate, or any of these, stick with it if you're comfortable with it. I'm comfortable with Arma 2. That's just how I am. So if you are using another another key binding set like Arma 3, please just, I'm going to try to go as slow as I possibly can, but not take up too much of your time. Kind of coincide, okay, this button to this, because I'm going to reference my keys, not what your keys would be. Okay, so these were my keys. We're going to go to view. Okay, it should be pretty much 
Just basic. Nothing really to it. Mouse. It's pretty much the same. I do use mouse and keyboard. Um, that's just how I play. Game will be the next thing. For this training purpose, we are going with helicopter flight model standard. Make sure that this right here, vehicle free look, is disabled. Okay. Now, a lot of you guys are probably going to be like, Skahan, come on, man. Standard, really? Come on. Just whatever. Again, I'm not going to say it 100,000 times. This is for basic. If you're advanced, just wait until I come out with an advanced. And then you'll be right there with me. But this is geared more towards those guys getting into helicopters coming from rotary wing, or from fixed wing to rotary wing, coming into the game brand new. They want to do it. They've seen it. This is what this is for. So, standard flight dynamics. Make sure free look is off because if you don't, it is really going to hurt you um, in the end. So, once the controls are pretty well set, that's pretty much it. Okay? Now your gear. Probably the most important thing. Now, if you've watched any of my videos before and any videos in the future, gear will pretty much be the exact same setup. My pilot or my suit, my uniform is basically my survival gear. I have my medical stuff, I have my earplugs, we'll get into those here in a few minutes, and I have my signal. Vest, pretty much the same. Combat load, medical, extra medical supplies, backpack, same. Except for this, these two little features, and this. You're probably asking, well, why the hell is a pilot carrying a charge and a clacker and a Kevlar and his, and his backpack? Why not just add more magazines? Well, I don't need 50 billion magazines. Unlike 99% of the people who just throw their crap in a backpack and just load their stuff in magazines, you want to know why you need 20 magazines? Because you suck at shooting. I'm sorry. Um, with the physics, as you can see up here in the top, um, the fatigue, the physics, the fatigue weight, everything like that. This gives me the best combat maneuverability with the best combat load. So that's why I have it. Firing device and the and the uh, explosive charge is for obvious reasons. If I crash land, I'm going to strap it to the front of it, blow my helicopter up, so it'll either A, respawn, or B, the enemy won't get anything in it. ACH. If I crash land, this, helic this hel heli helmet will do more damage than good. Um... Again, I'm using ACE, which means I have the sound enabled, which if you're shooting big weapons or a lot of weapons, your ears will start ringing if you don't have hearing protection like earplugs. These helmets will actually give you some sort of a hearing protection. It's actually an extra layer because you have mini guns and bigger guns. So this particular helmet with not this exact one, this one with the face mask and the one with, that's just the pilot, it'll work. They both do the same. I just like the one with the face mask. Um, this helmet with the earplugs actually help fight against it the best. Now, if I land, I can't hear around me. It's very hard to hear certain snaps, certain frequencies, um, and things like that. So, if I crash land, I throw my helmet in the in the uh, helicopter. I blow the helicopter up. I put my ACH on, and I'm ready to rock and roll. Okay. Face is face, night vision, don't get crazy guys, just get binoculars, you're not freaking laser designating shit. If you crash, your main job is to survive, get back to friendly units, get back into a helicopter. That's it. You're not freaking John Rambo here, just jack of all trades, and sometimes you are. But if you're really wanting to be kind of like a uh, an RP, this, this works. Helps you with terrain association and things like that. Basic rifle, don't use submachine guns because if you crash and they have anything that enhances the AI or enhances the armor or anything like that, um, submachine guns don't work. Uh, they don't work effectively. So just use something that can reach out and touch something if you really need it. Down here, you will absolutely need a GPS. If you have acre or anything like that, you'll need your radio and you'll need your basic navigations, watch, compass, and map. Okay? So, now that we went through our kit, you're like, well, you said three, scan hand, don't forget. Well, I haven't. I've already went ahead and pre-done my map. Now, it looks like a bunch of hoobla. Ignore this right here. This is something completely different. But let's zoom in. Before we ever take off, we go ahead and want to know our inbound, outbound, 
for all active air stations or air or uh, airfields, air stations, anything like that. So inbound, outbound, we want to know our route. So it's checkpoint one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, all the way up. We want to know everything that we need. Okay. So this is just to help you fly. Now normally you'll be inbound, outbound. And the reason it's good to start doing this is you will actually, if you don't and you're in a pub map, you'll have guys coming in and landing inside and coming in and landing. And it's just, it's crazy. It's insane. You have to kind of like offensive and defensive fly. And it's just terrible. Um, so doing that just helps you out along with helping everybody else out. It doesn't mean they're going to use it. Don't freak out if they don't use it because they're just going to be, I don't know, they're just being retarded. Um, Either way, it's always good to kind of get into some sort of a system. But marking your map, and you can do it just by double clicking. You can change anything you want, color, rotation. Make sure it's on global, unless you're doing PvP, then make sure it's on side. And I'll go ahead and uh, get it to where you can actually see it. Okay, you have these selections. Make sure it's on side if you're PvP, because if you do global, they're going to know exactly where you are and what your route is. Uh, vehicle just remains with the vehicle, but pretty much if you're only friendlies uh, versus AI, kind of like normal pub maps, uh, global's fine. Side is okay, command ain't going to do anything, group ain't going to do anything, and vehicle ain't going to really do anything. So once you've set your map, it's time to go ahead and get to the basic, the nitty gritty. This aircraft, this is a UH-60 from RHS, it's armed with two miniguns. It can carry roughly about 12 people, 4 crew. Um, why do you need earplugs? Well, we're not going to use earplugs today, but if you're flying, normally you will not have a crew. You may have a co-pilot, but 9 times out of 10, the infantry, the first two infantrymen that get in are normally the first two in the gunner seats. And the first thing they're going to do is they're just going to start shooting at random shit. And it's going to be annoying, and it's going to be stupid. I wish there was a way that the pilot could lock in game could lock those seats that only crew members could get in it from the aircraft not anything script I wish there was okay lock these seats and then you can reserve them and save them or keep people out of them uh, because it does get annoying and when you actually need the gun and need to support there's limited ammo because somebody just decided to waste all the ammo um, can hold up to 12 it is compatible with uh, with the basic sling load, it is compatible with RHS. Um, R R RHS. Uh, RHS is compatible with Ravlifter. Ravlifter also, uh, it is compatible with the sling load. Um, or not the sling load, the uh, fast rope. Sorry, I'm mixing everything up. So all those capabilities and functionalities and the mods that I named off are pretty much there in the basic game. Um, it pretty much utilizes it. This aircraft is very forgiving. It helps a lot. It really is a beautiful aircraft. Um, it can take a, a beating. It can, you can do some extreme stuff and it'll forgive you. Um, now you can't go completely like barrel roll 100 meters off the ground. You're gonna crash. Just, just keep it simple, stupid, kind of like that. Um, so the the aircraft is a basic model. Um, of what you would think an aircraft would be. It's nothing like the Chinook that has the twin main road or the two big main rotors it's nothing like the it, the or the vertebrate or anything like that it's nothing like that um, so it's pretty basic pretty easy little bird um, little birds a little bit more maneuverable as you can see it over there it's a smaller aircraft Chinook is a bigger aircraft but all of those um, fall into one category or what I consider one category and that's general aviation general aviation is transport and logistics Basically, you're not in a combat role, and you're not in a specific role of, like, medevac or an operations role, like in special operations or small, you know, rooftop landings, things like that, tactical, covert, sneaky, sneaky stuff. What you're basically doing is trying to go from point A to point B, get troops from point A to point B, or from point B to point A, and get whatever it is there. You're just, you're just a taxi. That's all you are, Okay. The reason we are not doing Little Bird is I'm going to do that in a more advanced video, and so is the Chinook. Um, you're probably like, any of you that have ever flown the Chinook is probably like, okay, 
why can't we do the Chinook? Because the Chinook is less forgiving. If you do some extreme stuff with it, it takes a lot to actually correct it. And if you don't know how to do it, you're going to crash. So this is the easiest bird to actually train on. So now that we've got all the technical issues out of the way and all, the, all that, go ahead and jump in the pilot seat. Let's go in first person here. And let's just hold your, uh, I'm holding left alt and moving my mouse. I'm just going to look around the cockpit, look out the window, see my visibility. Pretty much I can see quite a bit on my side, not very much on my co-pilot side. Can't see anything over left sh or right shoulder and very limited over the left shoulder. Pretty much I can see the last two seats um, facing me and that's about it. And I can see my, my gunner, which would be uh, the seat of the assistant gunner is how our unit does it. So, what I'm going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and start this engine. Before we do, we want to make sure it's clear. Go third person. If you're on a server or you're locked to first person, it's very, very good to actually get out, look around, start your engine. Because someone might actually pull up next to you and you not know it and blow your fucking main rotor. So once you're done, go ahead and hit raise collective. Or you can scroll wheel, start engine, or engine on. Um, doesn't really matter. And go back into first person. Our gauges are lit up, both on the same side. Now I'm going to look at the rotors. You don't have to do this, just listen. And right there it started to purr. Um, it really just started to maintain. So as you can see the visual of the rotors, you can hear it. That means the this aircraft is at max power. Okay. So, just to start off, raising collective is going up. Just pushing your button. Mine is Q. My lowering collective, which is basically bringing me down, is Z. So, we're going to just get used to the, the controls. Go ahead and tap your raise collective till you're about three meters off the, or a meter off the ground. If you go over, that's fine. It doesn't have to be perfect. You don't want to go above five. Don't go above five. Leave the mouse alone. I'm holding alt right now which is letting you look I'm not really in control I'm in control of the aircraft but I'm not really doing anything with it I just basically lifted it up off the ground I'm at a hover now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get you used to your mouse one meter off the ground you could smash the lower collective and you're gonna hit the ground and it's not gonna damage your aircraft it shouldn't damage you so bring the mouse back towards you put your nose down pushing the mouse away from you. Well, actually, if you do a good enough or deep enough, your back tire will actually hit the ground, but that'll bring your mouse up or your nose up. Left and right. Now, W A or S D A. Okay? That's basically what I just went through. So, we're going to do this again. Mouse forward, mouse back. Mouse left, mouse right, W, A, or S, A, D. Now we're going to add one. Let's go ahead and go, get you back in auto hover. It's fine for this to use auto hover just to get you stationed. Now we're going to add a key. Now we just went through your mouse. We went through your main four keys. You know how to raise collective. You know how to scroll wheel. X. C, X, C. It does the same as your mouse left and right, okay? Just to make sure you know that. Now you can sit here, and this is your first exercise, play around with this about a meter off the ground. Try to go from a positive 10 to a zero at a hover. Try to get it perfectly still. Perfectly at zero at third person. Then go in reverse. Do the same thing. Then once you've got that pretty well down, go to the first person and do the same. Now you can look up at the top left hand corner and see the speed, see my meters, see everything that I need, and that's basically what I'm gauging it off of. Take this time, pause the video, practice this, practice, practice, practice until you're 100% capable you know you can do it. When you're ready to move on, 
start it and go ahead and or first lower your collective all the way to the ground start the video and then we'll go ahead on the next section alright on the next section what you're going to want to do is now that you've fiddled with your controls go ahead control right control M or if you need to figure that button out go into your controls and find the mini map um, or the GPS that will bring it up on and it should look just like this on the right hand side of your screen unless you've moved around the screen okay now we're gonna go ahead and get ready to take off as you can see we're in the wrong direction we need to be going southbound so first of all find our first checkpoint shift click put a marker on it should look like this it doesn't have to be spot on it just has to be in the ballpark now as I said we are going we are looking at 002 you can see this on the top part on my radar it tells me where I'm going I'm supposed to be looking at 180 right now okay we're not gonna go through taxing until the very end so without hitting Q just hit C or X and just make your aircraft do a 180 until you're looking at your outbound it doesn't have to be perfect but let's just for sake purposes do it that way now as we're taking off you're going to raise collective and you're gonna put the nose down at the same time not hard finesse gentle gentle giant alright so raising collective pushing Q down to the max right now and I'm bringing that mouse back towards me raise your aircraft which means hold the collective down until you get to a hundred meters we're right now at 65 we're actually gaining a lot of speed now whenever you hit about 150 go ahead and push that nose up you want to maintain between a hundred to a hundred and fifty and you want to maintain an altitude between a hundred and fifty and a hundred so pretty much a one for one so stay between a hundred and fifty if you go over that's fine and stay at a speed of about a hundred to hundred and fifty okay and just aim in the way of your go uh, that you're going okay now halfway plan it out and just let go of the controls I'm holding alt I'm moving my mouse I want to demonstrate this as you can see the aircraft is auto correcting itself it will automatically begin to start correcting itself planning it itself out you can only see this in this view now a lot of you veterans out there are probably like well why don't you use the advanced flight model I told you this is for beginners but there is another reason if you use the advanced flight model you have a throttle that will stick basically you have to set your throttle at a certain level if I hit Z and put it all throttle all the way down and let go I will continue to drop okay we don't want the new guys to do that we're not at that level yet so doing this if you hit Z or Q you let off of it it will actually maintain that 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 uh, RPM now as you can see with us planning out it is actually dropping our speed so let's go ahead and maintain we're at the right height let's get back up to about 145 150 between 100 until you're used to it now this exercise we're about to go through go to first person and third person and you're gonna try this while in flight now if you have to please pause it go it from there but basically you're just gonna mess around with the controls and kinda get used to it now notice that see before our left to right with just the mouse was doing this now that we're actually going somewhere it's actually doing the A and D okay that's something to note what I do to make sure that my I'm comfortable is I use the W A S and D keys as my bulk turning my bulk and I use my bulk maneuvers so if I'm making a big 180 I'll use the W A S and D keys um, in conjunction with the collective and I will use my mouse for finesse little bitty adjustments and make it look smooth 
Now about a kilometer out from your checkpoint, go to first person, make sure there's nothing in front of you that you can crash on. And we're going to just go over and land. We're going to practice our land. Now we're going to do three exercises of landings. This first one is relatively easy. It's very simple. As we're, going, as we're approaching, we know that checkpoint one and that marker that we put on our inbound slot, the tail of our inbound slot, that is what we want to be looking for. Okay? Now, we are at pretty much a one-to-one -one ratio. I'm going to go ahead and raise this up slightly to make it a one-to-one. -one. Okay. Actually, slow it down. All right, now we're pretty much at a one-to-one. -one. You can see my speed and my kilometer, or my height, is one-to-one. -one. Pretty much the same. So let's go ahead and line ourselves up. About two clicks out, you want to be lining yourself up to the LZ or the airfield or where you're going. Once it starts counting down, you want to begin to make your descent. But notice, right here, we have power lines and we have windmills. Make sure that you're mindful of what's around you. Let's go ahead and drop it down to about 75 and maintain roughly between 50 and 75. Okay. Now once we're at about one kilometer out, it's going to start coming really fast. You should be able to see the airstrip. There it is. Now, you don't want to land on your mark. You always want to be slightly over it. That's kind of just to guide you. You can put it as you want, but right now we're about 500 meters out. Let's go ahead and drop to 50. Once you hit to about 35 or below 50, begin to slow down and you want to make the descent at a one-to-one -one ratio. As close as you can, it doesn't have to be spot on. But this will assist you the best. So notice that I'm not really going down any until right now. Now I'm going down at as much of a one-to-one -one as I possibly can. If I actually see that I'm going too slow, I'll speed up. If I'm going dropping too low, I'll slow down on my collective and you just want to make it nice and easy okay until it's about zero to zero there we go hopefully you guys did exactly how I showed you and you made a great landing it's very easy very slow and you're probably asking yourself well I these guys are doing it so fast what if you're taking shots we're getting there okay we're getting there this next exercise feel free to pause it and go through it as you wish but you're going to go up 10 meters, going 10 kilometers an hour. And then you're going to just put the nose back down, back up, and you're just going to slowly land. Okay? And you're basically going to hopscotch the airfield. Now you can do this on any airfield. It doesn't have to be a direct one-to-one. -one. It can be over. You can be going 20 kilometers an hour at 10 meters or 20 meters at 10 kilometers. It doesn't matter. Just you're practicing on this slow. And what you're practicing is getting your nose up and taking off, putting your nose down, slowing down, and landing. You want to land with tail down, slightly down. Now, as you can see, I was a little bit too high. I started coming back. So this will help you in, in pretty much the best sense as we're going up, we're going to start slowing down. And if you have to, if you're starting to go left or right, use your A and D keys to go ahead and offset you. And practice that as much as you can. You probably damage your aircraft, so just be easy on yourself. So I'm going to go ahead and get us on to the, uh, the runway. And at this point, you can go ahead whenever I land and pause and then continue that last exercise until you get comfortable with doing it okay once you're comfortable with doing it make sure you go to the ready position which is all the way down make sure you're holding lowered collective hold it down and then start the video back all right so going on to the next one we're going to do some maneuvers basically we're going outbound south but we need to get to checkpoint two and then we're going to checkpoint three and then all of a sudden we're making sharp maneuvers to the right. Okay? So before we take off, we know we're going to go outbound south. Go ahead, put your marker 
on or near your next checkpoint and let's go ahead and lift off. Again, you want to stay all over the top of the runway until you are completely off the runway, which right now I'm off the runway. Now go ahead and start moving that mouse to the right. Again, let's go up to our climbing out or our traffic altitude of 100, between 100 to 150, and let's let's speed it up to between 150 to 200 kilometers an hour. So we're actually going to start cooking a little bit more. Always be mindful that there is stuff around you that you will crash into, including other aircraft. Now, other procedures that I do, collision lights must always be on day or night, unless you're in combat. Oh, and I went a little high. Let's go ahead and drop it down. But in this case, you don't have to have the collision lights on. At night, if you're just doing just practice ops, I would definitely recommend having them. So at four kilometers out, and please be mindful that your your altitude is physical altitude, not uh, sea level altitude. So make sure you're not not confusing that. Your altitude will change. So we're three clicks out. It's pretty much ocean. Navigating over ocean can be very disorientating, especially at night, especially far out in the ocean, and especially first person with night vision on. It sucks. You can get really disorientated. So you have to rely on that altitude right there at the top left. Okay, so let's recap while we're pretty much just cruising along. I'm not, I have my hands completely off the controls. And what, what I'm doing is I'm just going to tap W, give my... Uh, Give my nose up just a little bit, or nose down just a little bit more. Okay. We practice your controls, just your mouse, just your keys. We practice them both. We took off. We landed. We practiced the little landing maneuvers. So you pretty much got the basics. You pretty much know how to fly. That's pretty much it. At about a kilometer out, again, make sure that you look. Nothing's going to run into you. Go to checkpoint two to three go back and readjust. Now, just because I switched my marker, as you can see it's right underneath checkpoint 2 on the right hand side, but if you notice on my map I'm not over checkpoint 2. Please go over your checkpoints. Anybody who deviates and then gets shot down and somebody has to come find you, they're going to go to those checkpoints and they're normally just going to go straight line distance. If you just cut off of them then there's no chance in them ever finding you, especially if you're using radios your radios go down or there's a bug anything like that. anything like that okay now as we're just cruising along one thing is one thing is you must always have at the forefront of your mind is cruising altitude for non-combat it should be higher than for combat combat will be lower and we will go that go through that towards the end of our route always keep an eye on your instruments always keep an eye on basically the top left hand side that you see you might have moved this around or might have defaulted move but make sure you keep an eye on that anything like that any of those go red yellow um, orange anything like that you definitely need to take note okay also note your altitude note your terrain flip to your map okay here comes a hill and we're gonna pass uh, just over it it says it's about 124 up, which means as long as my hands are exactly where they are, which is off my keyboard, it should raise us up within about 40 meters. Let's see if I'm correct. Oh, 70 meters. I was close. Close enough. So again, we're two clicks out. We're getting ready to come in for an approach. As I can see my speed slowing down again, I'm just going to put my nose up or nose down again, tail up. I know that I'm slightly to the right and I know that I'm going to go in for an immediate right hand turn and an immediate landing. Okay, So one click out, I'm going to go ahead. Now since I made this marker off, I'm going to put it at the end of the runway. Again, I'm 1.7 from the runway going over checkpoint. Now do not, until you're coming inbound, means you've passed checkpoint three do not begin to descend this will upset a lot of people who are trying to actually fly 
and they may be this will give you enough time that if somebody is taken off of that runway you can either hold back or you can actually drop or raise however you want again once we hit about 500 meters we want to drop down to about 50 meters and start slowing down to about one to one we're actually going to be aiming for the northern side of the runway so we're actually going to coast along the runway we're going to try to land somewhere near the front hangar now, there should be an air, air a small air uh, strip or air helipad up there uh, and that's pretty much where we're going to aim so as you can see I'm going really fast this is in case you're doing this you're really low really fast just don't freak out stop hitting your lower collective and just put back on the nose you're not going to hurt the aircraft don't go like this don't go real crazy with it just finesse and there's our helipad now normal taxiing is between 10 meters off the ground and so stay but stay between five and ten till you get over where you're trying to go then just hover get yourself to a hover and land pretty good pretty decent as long as your nose is in you're good you're you're basically getting there now let's go ahead and practice taxiing again we're gonna go ahead and raise up to about five meters now let's say we want to taxi over because there's a repair station in here well just use your D key bring that nose back and you want to just kind of line yourself up first just line yourself up it's not not shameful to actually land just line yourself up because there may be an aircraft in there waiting or just getting ready to come out so you're actually waiting with enough space for that aircraft to actually come out and turn. I'm actually probably a little bit too close. I should be a little bit back, but you get the concept. So let's say we have to go in here. We have to land in here because that's where it is. Go ahead, raise up one meter, and do not go over 10 kilometers an hour. Slow and steady wins the race. One kilometer or one meter off the ground is going to help you tremendously. You're going to want to watch those rotor blades. Now, as you can see, I got quite a bit of room on my rotor blades. I got, I'm slightly augmented left, but that's all right. Take it nice and slow. And now we're inside. We've actually flown inside of a hangar. Now, you're pro now we can do our repairs, we can do things, if enemies start shooting at us, we're at least inside of cover. We've finished our repairs, we've finished everything, now we're, it's time to get out. Now, instead of just swinging the tail end around, let's just try to back up. It's easier to back up. So, again, just tap a -roo, tap, tap, tap a -roo to about one meter, and I always tap my collectives whenever I'm low to the ground like this. And then just put that no or tail slightly back. You can even, in some most cases, actually put that tail onto the ground. Right now, I'm skidding the ground. We just did this exercise not too long ago. Now you always want to face parallel with the runway. Okay. Normally, in the direction you're about to fly. Make sure that you're cleared. Make sure no, no aircraft's coming in. Raise to about five, five to ten. Kick over on the runway, and then take off. The reason being is there may be other aircraft in front of you that is just holding there for certain uh, positions, but that's what we really want to do. Is you want to be over the runway. Now, if we look, we're right here. Our next checkpoint's here we got to make a hard turn and get to our cruising altitude. So let's go ahead and make a nice hard turn. Keep that nose up. If that aircraft, if you're turning too hard, that nose will go down. And I'll go into a little bit of corrections. So we're heading towards our next checkpoint. Now this is going to be a longer flight. We're going to take a look. 
basically going to hit these checkpoints until we get back up to here. Okay? So this is the time that you can actually start messing with your controls, seeing what things do, open and close the doors, just don't hit engine off or eject. That's bad for everybody. Um, but this is the time that you can actually, you know, raise above 200 and start really opening that aircraft up. Let this helicopter show you what it can do. Um, let, it, let it see the speed, let it see the agility that it can do. Um, don't try to do barrel rolls, don't try to do anything like that. Just just fly, just relax, just fly the aircraft. Okay, and at this point you're pretty much flying. You're pretty much done. Um, if you want to pause it here and just fly around, that's fine. Um, we got it quite a long ways to go. Again, one click out, we need to go ahead and start making our other point. And this is basic navigation you're doing right now. We're practicing your navigation. So, mountains, things like that. Um, we're not going to get too low. Um, we're not at that point yet. So I think this is just the easiest. Um, if you are going in a pub map, you are going to be expected to fly a little bit lower than 150 to 100. I would definitely not go below 50. Um, and once we get over uh, Kavala checkpoint 6, we will actually drop to about between 50 to 75. And we will fly the rest of the way to our next checkpoint, or checkpoints to our next air airfield between 50 to 75. But right here there's a lot of mountains and there's a lot of control buttons. I just want you to take the time and look at the altitude, look at the speed see how the aircraft is moving make sure you keep on top of your navigation now why do you need so many checkpoints well maybe you're actually in a search pattern maybe you're maybe Kavala you have to come in from the south because that's where your station is um, maybe that's where they want all incoming aircraft coming in at. Um, it just depends on the people it also depends on the people that you're dropping off, what their objective is. Maybe it's in the south and maybe it makes more sense to go inbound and outbound by sea. So as we're going to get ready to come up on our next checkpoint, which is checkpoint 6, we're going to go ahead and look for checkpoint 7. It's quite a, far, quite a ways away. And we're going to actually begin, once we pass over checkpoint 6, we're going to drop to about 50 to 75 meters. Okay? So... As you can see on our menu map, here we come. This is Kavala, and I'm giving you quite a quite a little tour. Let's go ahead and start dropping that down quite a bit. And I'm doing this in third person. You want to actually rewind this after you do it in third person and do it in first person. And just get used to the controls in all of them. Because the views are beautiful. The views are great. They'll help you out tremendously. Um, and I think it's better if you can see it in third person, what the aircraft is doing, and then you go to first person and you can kind of associate. Now we've lowered our altitude here, which means you're going to actually have to t pay attention to your altitude, which means you're going to have to actually pay attention to terrain. So basically what I do is anything that I believe that is going to get too close, I try to maneuver and miss. But I don't want to get below 50, no matter what at this point so you're really you're really close to the ground um, in arma terms you're going to be taking small arms fire about this height uh, the machine guns will start shooting at you things like that rockets will still be able to shoot you the higher you are the more susceptible to rockets the lower you are the more susceptible to uh, small arms fire there's really no in the middle unless you get above 2,000 meters up um, or lower than 30 uh, but we're not there yet. So we're just going to follow our waypoints. We're going to watch our fuel. And you can go back at the end of this video. Measure up the distance. Here we go. We're at one click. Checkpoint eight. Roughly about one click is what this, uh, this mini-map shows around you. So that's why about one click always move out. Because you don't want to do it too early. If you do it too early, you won't be able to see it. And you won't actually be able to... Uh, to move forward with um, going over that checkpoint. And there may be specific reasons. There may be specific corridors or highways um, that whoever server it is or whoever's in command wants you to go. 
So it's just, it's better to get used to this. So let's go ahead and open her up slightly. And how you open her up, raise collective, nose down. And it's got to be a little bit of finesse. Too far nose down, you start dropping altitude. Too far nose up, you start raising in altitude. Um, so pretty much, you're gaining speed nose down, but you're losing altitude. You're losing speed nose up, but you're gaining altitude. Okay, we want to stay between 70 or 50 and 75. Now, certain areas will stop. They will have hills. Don't just, you're not napping the earth here. Just coast over them the best you can. Um, as you can see, I'm at 60 now. Here in a minute, I'll be down to like maybe 20 or 30, but I know it's a hill. So just use your mind, use your brain. Get used to looking at the gauges, what they mean, things like that. Um, as you can see, we're slightly turning. Um, but pretty much right now, you're just getting used to the aircraft. You're getting used to being in the air. You're getting used to everything that is around you. Because right now, you probably have people around you, things going on, and you're trying to multitask. And you'll actually, whenever you're trying to focus, you'll actually enhance what's going on around you. Um, you'll actually be able to hear things because you're like, oh no. Um, so just be mindful this is your time to get used to it now see how it's planed out I'm outside of the terrain and there's really nothing in front of me but I'm 113 up so that's what I'm talking about just plane out let it coast once you see that it's pretty much the same terrain all the way ahead of you then then adjust there okay once we're about to click out we're gonna go ahead and go to our next checkpoint I believe we're pretty much wrapping it up uh, we got two more three more checkpoints before we get in um, and we'll do actually a uh, a trust fall if you will um, trust fall is actually going to free, probably freak a lot of people out um, I know whenever I first started out in medevacs it freaked me out um, until I figured it out and I got used to the aircraft, I got used to the flight dynamics, I got used to the model and everything like that. And I found techniques that it really, really helped me in. And it helped me gain trust with the aircraft. That it, I don't have to physically influence this aircraft to make it save itself. Um, this particular aircraft, just like the UH-80, will actually begin to s uh, correct itself if it is doing something weird like going in reverse or going side to side at a high rate of speed um, it will actually begin to correct itself so that is something to remember you're also the reason I'm taking such a long one you can go through um, I'll go towards the end and let you actually see the map and you can actually retrace these as you can see pretty much all the terrain this is a gentle slope we were just in the mountains um, ocean Plains, swamps, um, you name it, we pretty much just went through it. Airfields, things like that. So it's something to consider. And right here is the most deadliest. You have power lines. Now power lines are roughly, these major ones, they're pretty high. So we're going to go on the high end of 75 on top of this ridge just to cover over. Roughly about 70, 75. And you should go over them. Now as you can see... We're pretty much going to clear them quite a bit by at least 10 to 15, maybe even 20 meters on that one on the hill. But that's something to always remember. Power lines, power lines, power lines. And be vigilant. Know where those power lines are. You can zoom in and it will actually show you in these direct lines where these power lines are. Okay. So that's just to help you out, give you a little influence on staying aware because there's nothing like getting in getting in the groove you've practiced you get into public maps you're really excited you get that helicopter slot and then you take off and you crash into something and everybody starts hounding you because you're a scrub even though you may not be so power lines even kill myself sometimes I don't pay attention and at night it's a whole different ball game so this next part we're actually going to go over checkpoint 9 to checkpoint 10, and we're going to be actually in the ocean. We're going to be far enough away out at sea that we're not going to be able to see land. And you'll actually be able to see where the fog kicks in, 
and the water and the sky mixed together slightly. I mean, in the daytime, it's pretty easy to know. Um, at night, it's a little bit different, especially if you're going blackout. Um, it's very difficult if you don't have sh have some sort of a shoreline. Okay. So we're going to maintain between 50 and 75. Put our nose down a little bit more just to get a little bit more speed out of her. We're going to wait until this. And as of right now, you can kind of see that fog really starting to kick in. And right now, I've pretty well lost everything. Now, as you can see, it looks identical all the way around. Imagine this nighttime, pitch black, no moon, overcast, raining with night vision on. It is terrible. It is horrible. I'm not going to do that to you right now. I want it to be nice, sunny, pretty. You get to see this beautiful blue water and to really enjoy the game. Okay. So this is the time to actually start looking around and looking at the atmosphere. You know, where's the, what's the sun? What's the clouds look like? How's the fog interfere? You know, judge about how far it is out. Roughly, that's probably about a kilometer, maybe a kilometer and a half, possibly even three. You can really judge this by looking at your map. Now, over here is the closest to us, the closest uh, shoreline to us, but yet we can't see it. Okay? And we're roughly about a kilometer out. There we go. So, roughly about a kilometer we can start seeing. So that's something to always note. Um, how's the fog? How's the weather going to do? You know, if it's raining, is it going to be shitty? What do you need to do? So, as we're coming inbound, we're at a lower speed, we're at sea altitude, and we're coming to a hill. That means if I stay right where I am, if that hill, which we know, is 76, I'm going to crash into it because I'm only at 58. So let's go ahead and raise up to, we know at 76, let's raise up to 90. That should get us pretty close, but we should still be able to clear trees. Now we look at our altitude, and sure enough, 15. Now we didn't change, we overshot. If you do overshoot, don't worry. Just place your marker and keep going, okay? If you do overshoot, oh man, I overshot, don't freak out. Just make sure nothing's in front of you. Click your marker. Now on this maneuver, we're gonna make a sharp right-hand turn and we're gonna go in and we're gonna pull in for a landing, okay? This is a very, very difficult maneuver if you're not ready for it. Notice our speed and our altitude. Now we want to drop back down below 50 or below 75 but above 50. We're 2.2 out. Now 2.2 at this heading right there's the airfield. You're probably like well why don't I just go over there and land? Because we're not doing that. That's not how we're doing it. This is, I'm here to teach you how to fly. And let's say that if you do Zeus is just going to bring down rat. So we're about 1.3 out. By the time I get done marking where, I'm, where I want to land, or the end of the runway, I'm going to be a click out. And sure enough, there I am. I'm a click out. And right there is my point. There, Right there is the runway. Okay. Now, what you're going to want to do is if you're making a sharp turn, you want to get on the opposite side of the way you're turning. So if I'm turning right, I want to get on the left side. And go ahead make a steep kind of a steep turn and then just hold back S kind of a steep turn hold back S you can pause that go back what I'm doing is I'm putting D pushing D to turn me over not too steep roughly at about a 20 to 30 degree angle and then I'm holding S to kind of pull me around I'm gonna go ahead and line up I got a refueling truck back there I'm going to show you a little bit on the uh, on the ACE systems that'll that'll definitely help you out in the long run. So as we're coming in, we're getting ready to land, and we're almost done. Now before we land, we're going to go ahead and we're going to do our trust. 
That's why I go want you to fly to the edge of an airfield or wherever you need to be. If you're in the middle of the ocean, that's fine. I want you to turn on auto hover. Raise this aircraft to about a hundred and or just a hundred even. Raise your aircraft a hundred even. Turn off. Put your nose up. Let go of the mouse right now. Where it looks like this. Let go of the mouse, get off the keyboard. This is trust. Is your aircraft going to crash? What is your aircraft going to do? Now. Now I pulled my nose up, but as you can see, your aircraft, it didn't want to crash. It didn't want to go backwards. It wanted to auto correct itself and go forward. Apologies for uh, the background. Um, children are having a little bit of a uh, argument match. But let's practice this yet again. Make it go in reverse. Hands off. Now I adjusted slightly there just to get it to do this. Now sometimes it will stick. If it sticks where you're just going to the side, Z and C. Okay? So let me see if I can't get it to stick again. If I can really, if I can get it to stick, I can show you a very, very easy way to make this work. Okay. All right, right there. I'm stuck. I'm going sideways. Now, my X key will turn me to the left my C key will turn me to the right I'm just gonna hit my X key and look at that I'm going from 0 forward to 126 now if you try to do that right now your aircraft will not want you to do it why because your aircraft wants you to go forward this is why it's the trust this will put more confidence in you than you can shake a stick at so that is the trust if your aircraft is going, if you see your aircraft altitude falling really fast and it swings around and your nose is down, just hit S and bring your nose up. Or just bring that, that mouse, push that mouse forward, bring that nose up. So coming in for a landing on our last objective here, now that you've done your trust, now that you've got experience in the air, you're understanding your controls, you can land, you can take off. Um, you can maneuver, you can taxi, you've pretty much done everything that you possibly can think of. Congratulations. Except for one, you need to refuel this bad boy. Because, number one, our home base don't have a refueling truck accessible at this moment in time. Or we're just going to say that. So as we come in, we came in a little bit hot. You just want to correct yourself, but notice that I stayed above 5 meters. That will definitely help you. You want to kind of hover next to your fuel truck and you want it to be near the rear. Now this is way too far away. I can tell you that right now. Normally what I do is I try to get as close as I possibly can without my rotors actually, as you can see, my rotors are not actually going to hit that, air, that vehicle. Turn your aircraft off while you're continuing to hold down collective. Every time you land, you hold down collective because if you don't, there could be a cushion of air underneath of you. You mess around, you hit your keyboard or your mouse and it'll basically throw your aircraft off and you're not ready. So refueling with ACE is relatively easy. I'm not gonna go into it too far, but we do have to refuel. As we refuel, I'm using my interaction button and I've connected it okay I have no idea. right here's the line it's supposedly supposed to be it and we're just gonna go ahead and check our remaining fuel which is probably gonna be like a couple thousand gallons yeah or a thousand liters sorry refuel start refueling now this is not like your typical 
refueling point. Okay, it's not just going to automatically go up. It's going to start going in chunks. Now, once you're completely refueled, we're completely refueled right now. Depending on how the game setup is, it will depend on how long it takes. Once you're done, disconnect the fuel nozzle. Please return it, otherwise it will be a bad thing. But you'll always want to make sure you have fuel in your aircraft. Now, if you're not using ACE, you're not using this, you just hover next to it and hit refuel. Now, notice. Notice the rotors. The reason you don't want to get really close to this is because those rotors dip down. And as they start to go down, they can hit something and then dis get destroyed. So let's get back in. Let's start these up. As you can see, they just skim over the top of it. Now watch as the rotors begin to gain speed. They will actually turn up. And right now they're actually up. So it went from just skimming the top of the ass into that fuel truck to now it's completely cleared. That will mess you up if you're not careful. Now let's go ahead and set our waypoint to our next checkpoint and let's go ahead and finish this tutorial off. Here we go, we're moving up. Go ahead and lift off. And we're just going to go between 50 to 75 meters in the air altitude wise and just cruise on out. Now you're pretty much done. Congratulations. Uh, you can land, you can take off, you have a basic kit down. Make sure you save these that kit. Whatever you're comfortable with. As of right now, I can't eject from this so it makes absolutely zero sense to have a, have a backpack or have a parachute, sorry. So just carry a backpack. Carry that extra equipment in. Carry what you need. Um, that extra helmet that's going to help you. And I'm going to let you listen to the difference. Helmet on. Earmuffs on. With helmet. You can hear the difference. Okay. So I just wanted to make sure you guys understood that. Now we're one in, one out. Let's go ahead and pre-align. We're going to go across our checkpoint. And you pretty you have completed my skate hands basic tutorial on flight, rotary wing flight, mechanics of flight, and you 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 should be pretty comfortable. If you're not comfortable, by all means rewind and continue again. Now, as we're coming in, I'm probably going to be greeted with a rocket or something because I had a couple guys come in. Um, as we're coming in. We want to make sure, because see right here, make sure that you stay vigilant on what's around you. See, uh, there's power lines, there's a grain tower, and I'm at 69, 60, or 70, 71. My altitude is changing. Now, as you can see, I'm coming at an angle. You don't have to come straight in, straight out. Um, and good thing he came in right now because we're actually going to go go ahead and land this thing. So we're coming in at an angle. Okay. We want to make sure that we come in. We want to begin to slow down. We're at 35, 500 meters. Go ahead and begin slowing down again. We're not going to go too much into taxiing, but right now I'm going over the taxi. And right now I'm going over the runway. So let's go ahead and make a nice soft landing. You just slightly angle that aircraft. You can adjust all you need. Of course it wants to do something stupid. And we're going to go ahead and land. Shut your engine off. Maintain your down collective until you see those rotors stop bending up. Once those really start slowing down, like right now, then you can go ahead and dismount. Thank you guys for watching the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys learned a lot. Um, it's a fun aircraft. It's an easy aircraft to understand and to go through. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. 
Um, if you guys have any questions or comments, please put them down there. Like if you like it. Sub up if you want more. Um, I'm going to try to do a mini series with this uh, because I believe it's really helpful not to not only the community but my unit um, and to getting them going. So if my unit's watching this, kudos. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys learned. Um, hit me up in the office. Hit uh, any of our guys up. Uh, for any public members or public people, please, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, let me know what you liked, what you didn't like, um, what you were a little bit confused on. Um, and I will definitely try to go over it. I won't take up any more of your time. Have a great evening. Go forth and be badasses.